The Brazilian Football Confederation has announced that clubs could receive points deductions if fans or employees are found guilty of acts of racism. All 20 First Division clubs in Brazil approved the new sanctions. South American football expert Tim Vickfried now joins us. Good afternoon to you, Tim. Just tell us how this is going to work exactly. Well, these issues have been swirling around Brazilian football for a while. Um, if we go back nine years, a big club in the south of Brazil, Grêmio, where Luis Suarez is currently playing, they were kicked out of the Brazilian Cup because of the racism of their supporters, or some of their supporters. What the Brazilian FA, the CBF, have done now is that they have codified this to an extent which has never been done before. And it's not just racism. I'll give you the list of the things that they mention in the regulation, which will govern competitions that take place under the auspices of the CBF. It is uh, sexual orientation, gender, ethnicity, uh, nationality and religion. And it goes on to say that anything which affronts human dignity. So this is this is a broad based anti-discrimination package where anyone connected with the club, including the supporters, are to be held responsible for their actions. Now, the clubs are not really happy with it. They've, they've gone along with it, but they're, they're not entirely happy about having to be responsible for the behaviour of their supporters. Uh, there's a number of sanctions here. Uh, fine, the initial fine is uh, just around £90,000. That can be doubled in the case of, of, uh, of a second incident. Uh, the club can lose the right to play at home or have to play behind closed doors. Uh, the club could be unable to register players. And the last one there, the possibility of losing points. Although that possibility of losing points is open to appeal and will be defined by the sports justice system. Now, the race, the, the organisation that monitor racism in Brazilian football, they say that of these types of incidents, historically around 40% of sentences have been overturned on appeal in the sports justice system. So there is a process, there is a protocol. It's cumbersome, but perhaps the most important thing here is that the message coming out from Brazil's FA drawing a line. These types of behaviour, especially racism, homophobia, sexism, are unacceptable inside football stadiums, unacceptable when connected with football. And uh, anyone with any relationship with a club found guilty of these is open to sanctions. It's a strong message on what is unacceptable behaviour. Yeah, it does sound a very strong message. Uh, that's the good news. I'm really interested to hear what you had to say, though, there, Tim, that, that the clubs have kind of gone along with it, but they understand how important it is that they have to take responsibility, I guess. Yes. Um, the idea of the clubs losing points is especially controversial. Um, they really don't want to lose points as a, as a consequence of actions by some of, of their supporters. But as I say, this is open to appeal. The loss of points is open to appeal in the sports justice system. So uh, that, that's not cut and dry. The, the, the clubs have an opportunity to, uh, to, to present their defence um, because the idea of being responsible for the activities of all of their supporters is not one that they're entirely happy with. Tim, truthfully, does it feel like it's going to take a long way, though, to get to that points deduction? Because it feels like they kind of have to go through quite a few hoops to get there. That, I think, is certainly the idea. It's the big stick which is being kept in reserve. Uh, and there are a number of hoops before we get to that situation. This, nevertheless, I think, is, is evidence of a country moving forward. And it may well have something to do with a recent change of government. Um, the, uh, the, the previous governments under the far-right President Jair Bolsonaro were not particularly interested in these, in, in these issues. Uh, it's also significant that the president of Brazil's FA, Eginaldo Rodriguez, he comes from the northeast. Now, the northeast is one of the poorer regions of the country, and people from that region often also are victims of discrimination and prejudice. And that type of regional discrimination, which came out very strongly in the election campaign, that too is under the auspices of racism. So uh, it, 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 it's a broad-based anti-discrimination package 
which, uh, however cumbersome the, the the legal procedures, sends a strong message. Has it gone some way in terms of what, what we've witnessed only recently? You know, we've got the Brazilian internationals, Vinicius Junior and Rodrigo, speak, speaking about their frustration at the lack of action taken in Spain to deal with racism. I know Vinicius Junior targeted with a racist chart, I think, for the sixth time this season, this month. There's been no punishment for any of the previous incidents, so this will, this will help, I guess. Well, Brazil has watched this aghast, uh, and uh, Brazil is appalled at how slow Spain seems to be to act on this issue. And I think that that's given a further impetus for Brazil to say, look, we've got our house in order here. What are you going to do over there with one of our own? I mean, the, the, the scene of Atletico Madrid supporters uh, having a, a, a doll of Vinicius Jr. being symbolically lynched, absolutely revolting scenes. Uh, and I'm sure that the, the, these scenes from Spain and the lack of action of the Spanish authorities have added further momentum for Brazil to say, look, this is what we're doing. Have you thought about doing something similar? Yeah, I would agree with you, Tim. Do you feel there's a sense of some of these players just thinking, hang on a minute, I don't even want to play in Spain? Well, I, I wonder if it's going to come to this uh, because Spain clearly has a problem and has been dragging its heels on this problem. Uh, the one, perhaps, it's hard to find any positives in this, but if someone has to go through this, then Vinicius Jr. is a, is a very mature young man and it doesn't seem to be phasing him. There's no way that he should have to go through this, but it is forcing a discussion and one hopes that the consequences of the, this discussion will be positive inside Spain. Um, but yes, as, as, as we can surely conclude, it has added fuel to the flame in Brazil. Let's get our house in order. Let's make sure that we're setting an example. Yeah, and on that point, just finally, Tim, is that is that what you think we might see? I mean, listen, you've been in the game a long time. Do you think other countries, other you know, uh, authorities might follow suit and do something about it? I, I would hope so, yes. I, I, would, uh, I, would, I would hope so because I think we are making progress on a number of, of, of things inside football. When women's football, for example. My own wife was beaten by her father for playing football as a kid. The great Marta was beaten, I believe, by her own brothers. She has legitimised the activity. And women's football is in a place now, belatedly, where it's showing signs of making progress. So you can see you can see progress, but these things are an ongoing battle. Uh, and uh, I think what the Brazilian FA have done here is to make it very, very clear that we're making progress. If you don't want to accompany that progress, you're going to be punished.